Hello friends, how you are all? In this video, I am going to tell you about Ash watched Pokemon in his journey. Ash Ketchum has caught many Pokemon over the years, but they haven't all been winners. These are the ones that lose more often than they win. When it comes to the anime, Ash Pokemon tend to be either really good or really bad, with only a few really middling battlers that tend to get forgotten over time. Ash best Pokemon are easily identified as his Pikachu, Charizard, Infernape, and Greninja. But Ash worst Pokemon on the other hand are a little harder to nail down since they are not always the ones that fans would expect. Also the real life pictures of that Pokemon are shown in this video. So let's start the video in 3, 2, 1, start. At number 11, Unfeasant. Unfeasant was as first catch in Unova, as it was a disappointing introduction to the region. Unfeasant was however helpful in other ways, often adding other Pokemons in their training and was known to among the first rush to the rescue whenever a character needed it. Number 10. Torterra As our list does not take into account evolutions of each Pokemon, for example, when Torterra was a humble Turtwig and then a Grottle, it held its own against a handful of powerful opponents, even if it didn't always come out on top. But as it evolved, it somehow became less effective in the arena. In the 4-5 official battles, Torterra has a 4-11 win-loss record in all its official battles. Turtwig was lightning fast, Grotal was little slow, but as it grew and grew, the slower and slower Torterra becomes. Number 9. Snivy Aside from its poor 1-3 record, its personality is somewhat wanting. It was claimed that this was simply because Snivy had a higher standards for its trainer and its fellow Pokemons, but it mostly just came off as abrasive and snooty. Still there are few fans out there of this grass type probably limited to those who used it as their own starter in Pokemon Black and White. Number 8. Torkoal. There's no way to be gentle about this next one. With a record of 2-6, it was used much more often than most but it failed so often that it boggles the mind why Ash kept choosing it. Not only did it lose all time but it often was knocked out one blow, even occasionally crying over its repeated failures. Number 7. Oswald. Oswald is one of the better starter options in Unova, but Ash did little in the way of making an impact during this time in the region. Oswald stands out most for his personality, like many of Ash's worst battlers, which makes it a more memorable Pokemon than many of his others. Unfortunately, Oswald barely won more than half of the battles it was in, with the majority of those winning battles being early on in the journey. Boldor. Boldor is a Pokemon with great potential that was let down by its trainer. It is easy to forget that Boldor even exists as one of Ash Pokemon since he normally gravitates towards fast, heavy hitting attackers rather than defensive walls of slow rock type Pokemon. Despite showing some great promise in battle, it would continue to lose time and time again later in this series. Number 5. Palpitot. Palpitot is easily one of the more forgettable Pokemon on Ash teams and is the source of one of Ash's dumbest moves in the history of his journey. It's no surprise that the boy who decided to only bring Palpitot to a 3 on 3 match wouldn't do so well. And that's exactly what happened with this frog. Palpitot had the chance to be a truly great addition to Ash team. But his stupid need to keep his Pokemon at lower evolution levels and puzzling the decision making he exhibited during the Unova League really let Palpitot down. Number 4. Lapras Lapras' win rate can simply come down to how short a time it was with Ash, as well as the fact it was still relatively young when Ash caught it. Used primarily as a form of transport between the Orange Islands, Lapras occasionally took part in some of the challenges, but very rarely in open battles. It would be used in the battle against Drac for the Orange Island Championship, though it would end up drawing with a particularly powerful Gengar in the process, 
Since Lapras has returned to its herd, it is very unlikely it will have a chance to redeem itself in the future. Number 3. Mark This gloppy Pokemon was a surprise catch for pretty much every member of the audience at the time since it was so outside of Ash wheelhouse and came completely out of left field during the episode it was obtained. Mark would prove instrumental in defeating several Pokemon during both the Kanto and Johto League, particularly a very nasty Bell Sprout, but that would be the extent of its victories. Number 2. Tauros Ash captured 30 Tauros when they kept interfering with his attempts to capture as many Kanto Pokemons as he could. However, quantity doesn't mean quality in this case, as the one he used in battle had a record of 1-3 in official battles. Still, Tauros remains a popular Pokemon among the fandom. Number 1 is the surprise for all of the Pokemon fans. It is Pidgeotto, Ash's first evolved Pokemon and his second one overall. You would think it would at least serve as an early crutch, not so much. It goes on to lose to such dubious opponent as a pincer, a starmie and even a freaking widdle gave it a run for its money. If you think evolving it would save its standing, you would be wrong as Ash released the Pidgeot into the wild almost immediately to protect the Pidgeys in the area from the sparrows going to return. He never did go back for it and we can't blame him because of its questionable track record. So which of Ash Pokemon do you think is weakest? Write their names in the comment and also if you like the video then please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.